Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Marco Pasqua, and I am an accessibility consultant and inspirational speaker, and I'm local uh, to here in the Lower Mainland. I was so thrilled to be asked to be the MC this year because technology is in my blood. I actually have a degree as a video game designer, uh, I don't do that today, I do all my accessibility consulting things, but technology has always been an avenue to open up worlds of possibilities for things that are extensions beyond our own ability. And why is this meaningful for me? Well, technology for living actually impacted my life personally. Two years ago, I uh, welcomed the birth of my daughter. I was so scared as somebody with cerebral palsy to have a child because I thought, how the heck am I ever going to be an effective dad, you know? I can't really run after my child the way that I see other dads on TV or just my friends even running after their children. Is there gonna be solutions for me? Well, thankfully, it's actually thanks to technology that I was able to do that. Not only did I receive a modified crib that is uh, of height where I can actually wheel underneath it and have bifold doors to open it up to play with my daughter every morning and take her out, but it's thanks to technology for living that I have the, sw uh, the switch bots installed on my uh, curtain rods. Uh, it was actually Benson here who installed them for me. And I'm able to use voice activated technology every single day to open those curtains. I also have thermostats that are voice activated and a number of other technology that I've installed around that nursery so that I don't have to think about it. I can just be and I can focus on being a dad to my daughter. So it makes me really emotional to think about that. But that's exactly why you as student in, uh, innovators that are here today are changing the game and changing people's lives. So I want to give a round of applause to all the students for the wonderful work that they did. And with that, I have the esteemed pleasure of introducing Christine Gordon. Thank you so much, Marco. And thank you for that story. Uh, it was very moving. Um, welcome everybody to the Simon Cox Student Design Competition. It's my great pleasure today to think about Simon Cox. Um, Simon was a founder, a pioneer. We've been talking about pioneers when we saw the film. Simon was a generous, loving, caring person. And you know what? He loved young people more than anything else in the world. And he believed that you were the future. And he always wanted to do things to encourage you. So on this absolutely beautiful spring day, I feel like Simon is here with us. And he's saying, good for you, all you guys who are working so hard, and all of our peers who are inspiring you, because that's what Simon would have told you. It's our peers who are going to help you to innovate. They're going to give you the ideas, the passion to do what we need you to do in the world. So I just want everybody to remember Simon here today and to remember what he valued and what he stood for and to thank all of you for coming. Um, I'm pretty excited, as you are, to announce uh, those who were able to win, but I know that lots of students participated and that's even more important. Those who win, that's great, but it's being here and being part of this every step of the way that really matters. So thank you to all the students who took part in this and thank you to our peers for being part of it too and inspiring them. So now I'm going to pass the mantle over to Ruth Marcesetti, who is the ED, uh, and she's going to say a few words. Ruth? Thanks, Christine. I'm just going to uh, spend a few minutes thanking the sponsors today. And it's the sponsors who allow us to put this event on every year. So I would like to just thank, firstly, I wanted to just uh, recognize the Kinsman Foundation of BC who are in their 71st year. They celebrated 70 years last year. They created Technology for Independent Living Program, which we now know as TIL. 53 years ago, so thank you to them for all their support. They've supported this competition since the very start when it was Simon doing it at BCIT, when it was just the student design competition. And they continue to sponsor our door program with BC Rehab. 
I'd also like to thank other sponsors who are here today, Access, and all of the sponsors are on the back of our program. I will be asking Terence to come forward after the video. Terence is um, Terence Toy from uh, RBC Foundation is going to say a few words. I, I think they would be our platinum sponsors of the day. But meanwhile, we will show a video of the sponsors speaking in their own words of how this program aligns with their values. Thanks, everyone. Alden Brown has been helping clients achieve their financial goals since 1923. Our 100th anniversary is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the clients, team members and communities that have made us who we are. At Alden Brown, we invest for our clients' futures. We also invest in the communities where our clients, team members and their families live and work. Through our involvement with the Simon Cox Student Design Challenge, we are experiencing the incredible impact that Technology for Living has on our community. We are proud to support this important and inclusive initiative. Audlin Brown strives to partner with organizations like Technology for Living that share our commitment to making an impact on our community now and for generations. So KPMG in Canada is a professional services firm that offers audit, consulting and tax services. Um, and we're honored to partner with Technology for Living for the third year in a row um, to sponsor the Simon Cox Student Design Competition. Um, at KPMG, we've worked really hard to create an inclusive and diverse environment that truly values thinking and doing differently um, and where everybody can bring their whole selves to work. Um, so we're so grateful to have the opportunity to collaborate with the community partners such as Technology for Living through these types of events. Um, seeing the impactful solutions being brought to life through these competitions is truly inspiring. And it's an opportunity for our firm to further encourage emerging talent in the technology industry promote sustainable design practices and showcase all of the creative solutions that will lead to greater independence for people with disabilities. Good luck to all of the participants this year. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Philip Jewell from the Kinsman Foundation of British Columbia. I'm a volunteer executive director and a past 30 year Kinsman of uh, Coquitlam and uh, was on the board and board chair for a period of time. Uh, since the inception, we have sponsored the Simon Cox Awards and competition because Simon Cox was a longtime kinsman and a director of technology for independent living, which kinsmen founded over 50 years ago. Uh, we have a long history with people with disabilities, going all the way back to buying land for Dr. Strong, where GF Strong stands today, back after the war. And Dr. Strong got engaged with people that had injuries from the war. Our foundation was founded in 1952. We just celebrated our 70th anniversary and have continued to be very engaged with the disabled through that whole time. At one time that meant iron lungs and shots for polio, and today it means maybe walkers or assistance with scooters or wheelchairs, etc. So we're very, very proud to be a part of the Simon Cox competition and awards. We wish all the competitors good luck and as with our technology for independent living, which is now technology for living, these ideas and the use of technology have revolutionized the lives for people with disabilities. So very good to all the contestants. Keep it going, keep thinking, think out of the box, create new things and make lives better for people. Thank you for your time. What a beautiful day, uh, what a, amazing uh, afternoon uh, celebrating the tremendous success of Simon Cox student design uh, competitions and really celebrating the, uh, the very important uh, tremendous successes of this program as well. Um, to the young people that I met, that I talked to today, uh, who've joined us today, you are the exceptional examples to uh, all of us. That, that's incredible. 
Despite the unprecedented times we're living in, uh, one thing really hasn't changed. You know, when I I'm still get so much energy from talking from, uh, you know, from, from you folks and uh, the, you know, interacting with you, I always learn a lot from all of you. It's, uh, you know, it's inspirational, so thank you for that. Uh, your perseverance, your hard work, optimisms and ability to learn and adapt are not only inspiring characteristics, but they are increasingly the skills that require to succeed in ever-changing world of work. Young people have the confidence, capabilities, and the inspiration to reimagine the way of our country works and a chart a more prosperous and inclusive future for all, for all of us. They have ideas that help to build us back better. So thank you for all your ideas. Really love them. As an employer of 80,000 employees worldwide, RBC is deeply committed to ensuring the well-being of our colleagues, our community, and most especially our youth. Now, RBC Future Launch is an acting as a catalyst for change during the fa next five years, we'll continue acting as convening power, taking a more than money approach to helping young people assess meaningful employment throughout the work experience, skills, development, networking, mental well-being, support, and services. We've made a long-standing uh, commitment to work collaboratively with all the stakeholders, including government, educators, and public and private sectors, and most importantly, with young people to drive change, co-create solutions, and break down the barriers young people face when transitioning from school to work. This includes design competition program at Technology for Living. It's very important for you to have uh, your, uh, to, to like yours, but like yours. Pokemon help really help youth. RBC Foundation is pleased to support the competition. It is investment in our collective future, one which will meaningfully support youth to develop their skills and make a difference to the community. On behalf of RBC and our colleagues, Amy, here today, thank you. When youth, young people succeed, we all succeed. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Terrence. And uh, now I'm actually asked to talk a little bit about the Technology for Living program. Uh, this was a little bit of uh, an adventure for me as well to learn a little bit more of the history behind the program. So for those of you who don't know, the Technology for Independent Living program is a not-for-profit program that serves people with physical disabilities using technology and home automation to make their lives more independent uh, in their home environment. Now, it was in the 1970s when the kinsmen discovered the need to support the independence of individuals as many were leaving uh, care facilities voluntarily and signing release forms saying that they would take full responsibility for their lives in the community. Now, programs like the Opening Door program uh, make access for someone at home a breeze, and most rental units actually don't have apartments that feature uh, door openers uh, on someone's unit. So this actually creates it a much more simple process for someone to just simply have the independence to leave the home, which I think everyone here could say is so important. The Environmental Controls program, which I've benefited from myself, um, ensures that members can control elements of their home through specially designed switches, sip and puff mechanisms, or voice activation. And for me, who never stops talking, that can be dangerous. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we are going to play a video now about the TIL program. So take it away. So in Technology for Independent Living is a non-profit program that serves clients throughout British Columbia with physical disabilities. So what we do is use technology, home automation, uh, to make their lives more independent within their home environment. We have four trained biomeds, so some of the things they make from scratch and some of the things they, they use the Google Home, they'll extend the functionality of the Google Home so we reach further into the functionality of existing equipment. A real champion for us that has guys that needed a bit more independence and started to help people in the 
out in the community. Well, I have a chronic progressive disease, so everything that I need changes over time. And now I use Siri and this telephone cell phone that clamps onto my tray, and I can do it all without touching the phone. So this clamp has meant the earth to me. They came up with the device where I can, with the switch, move the bed up or down. And uh, also there's a drinking uh, water tube through the middle of it so I can have water throughout the night. Till is there to pick you up. Like guys from Tills are just, not just technicians, they are actually being my friends now. And it's just so easy to communicate with and they listen very well and I'm surprised there is not much people around the city know about them. These guys are awesome. You know, living independently is everything. It's, you know, it gives you a quality of life that you wouldn't have if you didn't have different, you know, types of environmental controls or, you know, staff. That freedom, the independence that everybody's looking for. It's truly a life-changing program, and uh, like I say, I've reaped the benefits myself. Um, I do want to transition now to somewhat of a more somber moment, and that's in recognition of a gentleman that was featured in that video, uh, Mr. Terry LeBlanc. Now, Terry was a board member for Technology for Living and a long-term champion for the TIL program. And innovations in the TIL program helped Terry to live a more independent and be more an active participant in, in our community and throughout society. Now, uh, I understand that we recently lost Terry, and uh, that's a great loss for this community, but I understand that there's a guest here today that's gonna say a, a few words about Terry, his life, and his contributions. So I'd like to invite that guest up now uh, to say a few words. <laughs> Linda, everybody. Um, Terry was a teacher and an inspiration to all of us. When I go to the sailing club and be waiting for a volunteer to go in the boat with me, Sailing, Terry would take off um, in a Martin 16 with Sip and Puff, um, racing us all to the race line um, very quickly and very fast. Um, Terry was always involved in giving. He was on the board for, for TIL. He worked with the Sibling Foundation in a number of programs. He worked with spinal cord injury. And he was often um, on boards or working committees and participated in SCI and Disability Foundation events in the community. Terry's physical attraction was surpassed only um, by his kindness, intelligence, and willingness to help others. Um, he was determined. And when Terry went to night school, we often would sit on the phone at night reviewing mathematical solutions to problems that he had to deal with. In 2006, Seven, Terry and I flew to Halifax to the um, to Mobility Cup, and as always, Terry was in the gold fleet, sailed by himself, and won more races than any of us could even imagine. But he was easily a participant, not just in sailing. He really participated in, with the fiddlers and the accordions and the kids dancing and the lobster and the unending fish <laughs> that we had to share in in Halifax. Um, we might say here that um, Canadian National Railways on an annual basis transports our boats from Vancouver to Halifax for us to sail and back again and they've done that for absolutely years. Um, we were, when we were in Halifax we were supported by physiotherapy students who were always at the club that when we came off the water dredge they were there to help us um, get changed and be ready for the evening activities. I can only say that Terry will be missed by all, um, that he was a friend, he will always be a friend to many of us, and without question, he was a giver, not a taker. Yeah, 
my name is Terry LeBlanc. I've been in a chair since 1978. Uh, it's 45 years now. It, uh, yeah, really hits home when you do the calculations. And I'm three months shy of 70, proud to say. But I remember back in 1978 when I was initially injured. Uh, I guess when you're 25, you're more adaptable to whatever's happening. And I just thought, well, this is going to be a different, different life. But life goes on, and uh, you know, I've got a lot of years to uh, to go in 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 this state, so. Uh, I, yeah, I kind of embrace the life goes on. I'm gonna make the best life of it. It's a competitive outlet on race days and other days it's just great to leave the chair behind on the tarmac and uh, you're sailing free. Well, when I came back to, to Vancouver uh, from Nova Scotia, here was a sailing program that was all set up uh, even with a sip and puff, it's just magical. It's just spectacular. Yeah, so that, that's a very liberating experience to have this boat go wherever you want, actually easier than the chair. Well, of course, my, the thing that I hope for is the cure, of course. Yeah, my hope is that they ultimately won't need wheelchairs in the future, yeah. It's a world of lifelong learning. The world is your oyster. There's so much out there to work on and learn and, and enjoy. So keep your chin up and work hard. What a truly inspirational man, and uh, I'm sure he's touched so many lives of everyone here in this room. But I know that he would also want us to keep the energy up and the meaning of today's competition to stay up and stay positive, because that's exactly what Terry was all about, is making sure that those innovations are brought to light and that more people recognize the benefits of these adaptations and, and designs. And so with that, we can't call ourselves a competition without some esteemed judges. So uh, I, I understand we don't have the budget right now for me to use uh, you know, some licensed music and do my best impression of Michael Buffer while I invite all the judges down, but I'm gonna do my best. So first uh, to join me as a judge, uh, I'd like to say Wayne, Wayne Pogue, as the team lead for uh, biomedical engineering at TFL, Wayne oversees the provision of technical expertise in both the till and prop programs. So Wayne, just give a, give a wave, yeah. Our, our, our next judge today is Chris McBride. And since 2010, Chris has served as the executive director for Spinal Cord Injury BC, uh, where uh, he brings a passion for making a difference in the lives of people with disabilities and their families. Give a little wave here, Chris. <laughs> Taylor Danielson, he is the community coordinator with TFL and he started working with TFL in 2020 as a technician, helping our members with their technology, and uh, he's doing and making waves today. He's armed and ready to go, so give us a wave there, Chris, or Taylor. <laughs> Vivian Garcia, who sustained a spinal cord injury in 1988, but she brings her lived experience in her role as a judge for the Simon Cox Design Competition, so thank you so much, Vivian, wherever you are in the room. Oh, hello. And last, but certainly not least, Jason Chung. And Jason is an assistive, assistive technologist at GF Strong Rehabilitation Center, the largest rehab hospital in BC. Now, he has a background in biomedical engineering and a passion for tech, so a guy right after my own heart. So, Jason, wherever you are. Now, 
I know we kind of talked about this last year as far as what the judges are looking for, uh, but maybe, Wayne, are you able to come up really briefly and just say a little something about what the, the I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. Literally, this is not planned at all. Um, but um, you, you said it so eloquently last year that uh, I'd love to hear a few things about what you think is possible and what you guys look for. Uh, well, I, I think if I said it so well last year, we should probably just play the just, video. Just loop it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but no, as, as judges, we look, we look for a lot of things. And um, one of the most important things is how useful the device is for uh, not only our members, but people who have physical disabilities that need a little bit of assistive technology uh, or home automation help within, within their home environment. Um, and I mean, there's, there's a lot that goes around that. but. Um, as we saw this year, there are, there are uh, some technologies that, that don't have a lot of wires or things in them, but the useful benefit and what it can do for people, uh, a vast group of people, uh, is important. Uh, we also saw some, some projects here with a lot of wires and, and a lot of technology in them. Um, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see those things. Um, and, and it just shows that it doesn't matter how you go towards these challenges, how you fight these challenges around assistive technology. Um, there are a bunch of ways we can do it, and, and, and hopefully a lot of benefit comes out of it. So, so judges, are, judges are looking for everything from technical ability to usefulness to innovation. Have we seen something like this before? Uh, and I think we were uh, more than pleased with what we saw this year. Couldn't have said it better. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better. You did an amazing job. And uh, so with that, I just want to say like exactly what Wayne said, you know, technology doesn't necessarily mean that it's voice activated or that it uses augmented reality or AI or anything like this. So one of the projects that I sat in on in the pitch today was a hook and loop system for just simply being able to tie your shoes with dignity. And honestly, for me, that's an amazing thing. Right? Just to be able to go out there and do it on your own, to be able to 3D print a device that is literally eight cents, we were told. So talk about cost efficiency. And so uh, with that, let's take a quick look at some of the entries from this year. As students in engineering, we are constantly looking for solutions to problems. They say a picture says a thousand words, so a video must say millions. And that was incredibly well edited and well put together. So now for the moment you've all been waiting for the awards themselves. 
So for the first award, the Don Danbrook Innovation Award, I'd like to invite Anthony Chan to the stage to present this award. Anthony. Well, um, it's always intriguing to see the solution come up by, by these young people. Um, I remember, still remember, over 20 years ago, Simon Cox, who is one of my very good friends, introduced me to TIL, which was part of Kinsman at that time. Um, and through that, I get to know Don Danbrook. Actually, I'm not going to present the award. I'm going to ask Don, who is present today, to come up and present this award for himself. So Don, come up. Um, I often, actually with Simon, uh, quite often go out for coffee or whatever, and Simon's passion is always right, using technology to help people with disability. And also, he is very interested to inspire young people. So to name this competition as Simon Cox Design Competition, I think this is something that actually uh, allows Simon Dreams to be going on and on and on. Uh, and actually, with the years, right, this competition has, grew, has grown for so, like, become, used to be a PCIT for in a small room, now it's a, uh, a public competition involving many, many education institutions. So, um, Don, Don Danbrook, um, when I first knew him, we were, like, when the former like technology for living was just like getting together right that was how long ago 2006 don and i were the sort of the first uh, uh slate of uh, the board of directors and for how long now 26 16 years don has been a board member uh, with his accounting background he has been the treasurer of the board and with his skills, he has been making the, like, uh, balancing, not just balancing the financial books, but also allows the uh, organization to provide all the services and also grow the organization. Uh, so, Don, um, this uh, award is to honor Don as well as to acknowledge his contribution for all the years of work in the organization. So, um, who is the only winner? <laughs> Let's find out. I'll, I'll let Dawn to announce it. Okay, the uh, Innovation Award uh, presented to Tremor Stabilizer. In recognition of Um, well, thank you everyone for voting for us, first of all. Um, we're part of the integrated engineering community, so every year we do an eight-month capstone project, and this year we really wanted to design something that uh, affects someone of our, we know ourselves. Uh, this money is going to be used to better the lives of accessibility users, so thank you so much again. Thank you. Okay, I'm officially triple mic'd up now. Triple mic'd. So hopefully everybody can hear everything coming through here. Thanks so much, gentlemen. Uh, that's an incredible innovation. Uh, next up <coughs> is the Luke Melchior Achievement Award. Is that, am I saying that correctly? And I'd like to congratulate the winners and invite Paul Gauthier, or Gauthier uh, to the stage to present the award. Oh, is it Christine? I'm so sorry, it's Christine. Paul wanted to be here today but he couldn't, uh, so I'm going to try to pinch hit for him. Uh, Luke Melchior uh, passed away in 2021. He was an original member of TFL. He was a person who constantly thought about innovation in every part of his life. Um, you can actually see a wonderful film about Luke made by the National Film Board. 
And uh, if you just Google Luke Melchior, uh, it will come up and you will be fascinated to learn about his life. Uh, Luke actually made the backpacks for the ventilators that we used. Um, and because he was a marketing guy as well, <laughs> he tried to market those. Uh, but they were so useful, so helpful to people. Uh, Luke was practically minded. He was optimistic. Uh, he was very, very positive about life, even though he had lots of reasons not to be. So he would be just delighted, I think, that we have named this award after him. Uh, and I am actually really delighted because it gives us a chance to talk about him and to remember him. Um, and I know that Paul wanted to be here today because Luke was his friend um, and an inspiration to Paul and to all of us, I think. Uh, Luke was one of those people who uh, got into a group home and then got out of a group home and lived independently, just like Paul did. Um, and so I think that there's a whole generation of people who moved beyond uh, kind of institutionalized care and out into the community, and they did so with so much courage and so little support, and Luke was one of those. Um, so, for those of you who are winning this award, boy, what an honor. Uh, and I'm absolutely thrilled to present it to the proximeter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not used to the mic. Um, thank you all for voting for us and for watching. And uh, I guess for giving us the chance to show what we came up with. And I really hope that our device can lead to something even bigger. And it actually becomes like an, a, a major component of wheelchairs as a safety feature. Thank you. Nice. Very nice. Excellent, excellent. Uh, now we're going to be presenting the Heather Morrison Peers Choice Award. So congratulations to the winners. And I'm going to invite our friend uh, Taylor Danielson to the stage to present the award. Taylor. All right, hello, everyone. Today I have the delightful opportunity to present the Heather Morrison Peers Choice Award. This award celebrates Heather and her lifelong dedication to helping others, her resilience, and her ability to spread joy with her actions. Just like the irresistible snacks and treats she brings to the residents of the George Pearson Long-Term Care Facility to brighten their days. Alongside Jeanette Anderson, Heather co-created the po peer program at Technology for Living, providing priceless peer support and guidance to pe people transitioning to life with a tracheostomy or joining our PROP program. Her ongoing commitment to the residents at George Pearson is a testament to her empathy, kindness, and unwavering spirit. The Heather Morrison's Pierce Choice Award embodies these values as our peer community selects the project they believe will make the most impact on a person with a disability, enabling them to live more independently. Without further ado, let's celebrate the winners of the Heather Morrison Pierce Choice Award, the Proximeter. Congratulations on your incredible achievements, and thank you for your dedication to enriching and enhancing the lives of people with disability. May you continue to spread joy and inspire others, just like Heather and her delightful treats. <laughs> come back to the microphone again? Yeah, you can swap out. <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody. Um, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say that we'd like to help as many people as possible, and this is giving us the opportunity. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you. And for our final award, last but certainly not least, the Simon Cox Principal Award. And I'm going to introduce Heather Morrison to come up to the stage to present this award. How fitting. 
am so glad to be here today. It's an exciting place to be. Someone who would enjoy being here today is Simon Cox. He was intrigued and excited about technology, and he was always curious. Simon encouraged young people to be involved and to see all the hard work everyone has put into this competition would please him. To win this Simon Cox Student Award carries a great responsibility. You have big shoes to follow in. Simon was a unique man. Nothing was too big that he didn't feel there was a solution to work toward. You came to him with a problem. He took it as a challenge. He was always curious and creative. And when we needed a leader for the new prop program, no one could think of a better person than Simon Cox. And we were right. He did a great job. Simon was a warm, not like me, my shirt says I'm cold, <laughs> a person who took people for who they were and not imposing his own idea on how they should be, like we all do. You left time spent with Simon feeling good about yourself. Now that we, you, have started down the road with the Simon Cox competition, I hope you all go forward with a little Simon Cox in you. The world would be a better place if we all had a little spark of Simon in us. Thank you to everyone who entered this competition. Technology is important to me. It makes a big difference in my life and the lives of many of us. Now that you have started creating for the disabled, I expect to see great things. Keep up the good work. Thank you, and may God bless you. Now, the award. <laughs> okay, the, the winner of the Simon Cox Principal Award is Shoelace Hook. Woo! <laughs> Photos here, video there. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to say a few words, please step up to the yeah. podium. Hello, there. can you guys hear me? Yep. Uh, we just want to thank you so much for being a part of this conversa uh, competition. It was, it was a joy over the last four months of designing our, our shoelace hook. And we just want to thank uh, the uh, foundation on, uh, and also our school, UBCO Okanagan, and our professor, Sabine Whalen. Thank you so much. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. All the best. Great. Well, uh, that leads us to the end. However, we do have some closing statements and some thank yous we want to make. Wayne, don't sit down quite yet. I'd like to invite Wayne up here to say uh, some of our closing statements and thank yous. And thank you, everybody. It's been incredible to be the MC here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah, first, so, so I get kind of the fun part of the show where you guys are all going to clap for a bunch of people that helped out. <laughs> I'm going to feel like it's all for me, so the louder we go, the better here. Um, so first, first of all, Marco, I just want to thank you for, for keeping us entertained today, um, <laughs> keeping the energy up, and uh, we always appreciate listening to you for a couple of hours, so thank wow. you very much. Uh, Chelsea and Britt behind the cameras here. Um, you might not see their work today. Chelsea, you'll see some of her work in the videos today. 
Um, but over the next few days and next few weeks, uh, there's going to be more uh, pictures and videos coming from this event. So there's going to be a lot of great stuff to see. So thank you both so much for being here. Uh, sponsors. I know Ruth uh, mentioned the sponsors already, um, but they, they are an integral part of today. Uh, so I just want to again thank you uh, to continue to, to support this event, um, which in, in turn gets more, as, as we get more support for this event, we get more students, we get more schools involved, and that increases the amount of assistive technology and solutions we're seeing. So sponsors, thank you very much for being involved. And you'll see a whole bunch of people in Simon Cox shirts today. A lot of them are the staff and the board members of Technology for Living. Um, a lot of energy and ideas and, and focus throughout the year goes into this event, uh, right from May of last year up until today. So uh, for all the staff that uh, were on committees and were judging and were helping out all the way through, and especially today, thank you all so much. Uh, and, and finally, to somebody on our committee who put a whole lot of hours into this event, um, we, we saw her around a little bit today, um, but in the background, she's doing a lot of work for us. Um, so, Melody, I want to thank you for being part of the committee all year. And uh, you did a fantastic job, and we really couldn't have done it without your input. Of course, everybody who showed up to, to view the competition, there are some faces here I haven't seen in a very long time, so it's, it's nice being, being able to see you all again and catch up a little bit. Um, so thank everybody who, who did come to, to see the projects and to support Technology for Living. Thank you all for being here. And last, but obviously not least, are the teams. Um, this competition couldn't be done without the students. Uh, without the instructors, without the school's involvement. Um, as Ruth or somebody had mentioned earlier, we, we had started this, I think maybe it was Marco. You guys look so similar, sorry. Um, <laughs> Marco mentioned earlier, this, this competition started out at BCIT many years ago um, with the, the BCIT Biomedical Engineering Program, and I love that they're continuing their involvement, and it's, and, and it's, it's so ingrained in that program, so I appreciate that. Um, but to be able to go BC wide and get students from the Okanagan, um, from all over Vancouver, uh, Vancouver Island, we've had a lot of uh, great school turnover the last, last couple of years and, and obviously we couldn't have done it without you, so thank you all very much. Marco, back to you I think to close okay. this out. Yeah, I know. Just a final statement to say thanks to everybody. Uh, Thanks to Ruth, the executive director, and the rest of the team here for uh, hosting the competition and making us believe that the impossible can be possible with the right team. So thank you so much. We hope that you join us next year, and uh, God bless. <laughs>